Hey, last week we looked at 1 John 3, 16, which is one of my favorite verses, which says, we know love by this, that he laid down his life for us. So we ought to lay down our lives for one another. Okay, that's it. Devo's over. You go do that and uh, man, marriage would be so sweet, right? Or how about this one? Philippians chapter two, verses one to four. Therefore, if there's any encouragement in Christ, if any consolation of love, any fellowship of the Spirit, any affection and compassion, make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, let each of you regard one another as more important than himself. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Have this attitude in yourselves, which is also in Christ Jesus. He was God in the flesh, but he didn't consider being God of value. He laid down his life. Remember your wedding vows? And you would lay down your life. You would sacrifice your own needs and wants for that of your loved one. Well, we are continually fighting against our flesh, aren't we? As Martin Luther says, we have this inward curve of selfishness, a, a, a sinful heart, can constantly battling against flesh versus spirit. And Tim Keller speaks of this as well. He says the main barrier to the development of a servant heart in marriage is the radical self-centeredness of the sinful human heart. Oh, man, I tell you what, marriages that are troubled in some way, they've maybe gone through a tragedy where there's conflict, there is a lot of hurt, bitterness, lack of forgiveness or whatever. When there is someone in that marriage relationship that maybe even come to counseling and says, I have sinful tendencies. I have a heart that wants to be disobedient to God and selfish and prideful. Uh, I need the Holy Spirit's help and your counsel. How can I be the person that God wants me to be? And they're not even thinking about their spouse. And guess what? Th their spouse probably thinks the same thing, hopefully. It says, I need help. My sinful heart. How can I be? And, and there's no limit to what can happen when you get two people who say, not my will, but God's will be done. Not my interest, but that of God's interest. And the other person next, myself third, it'll take care of itself, as Matthew chapter six talks about. And we be that in our marriage relationships. You know, if we can take these verses and we love and they're in our brains and let's go apply them today with our spouses. I'm going to pray here in just a second and, 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 and ask you, would you think about maybe a word that you could speak to your husband or to your wife that would be an encouragement to them? Maybe it's something that they've done you can thank them for. Maybe it's something that uh, you could say that would be an encouragement um, about their character. Or maybe it's something you could do for them, uh, some act of service that you know uh, would be a blessing to them. Maybe it's something that they would make them happy. Well, go, go do it. Go do it because of your love for God and your love for them. And just watch how your marriage comes together, this unity of the Spirit. It's allowing love to do its miraculous work. It only happens when you're willing to lay down your own preferences and desires and tendencies. Could we pray about that right now? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you would love us so much that you would lavish the best that you had, your own son, you would lavish that love towards us. And in that spirit of feeling overwhelmed with that love, undeserved as it was, may we give that same undeserved love to our spouse or loved one. Would give us a, an idea or a word something we could do or say to our spouse that would be a blessing, that would honor you 
and be a blessing to them. Lord, uh, we want our marriages to glorify you. So have your way with us. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Well, may God bless you in your marriage today. Go and do that. Take what you know, what you love, and go serve and give yourself for your spouse right now. Thanks for joining us. God bless you.